I'm Sven Hosford, and I have a, the distinct privilege today of speaking with Dr. Safdar Chaudhry of St. Clair here in Delmont. And uh, I want to learn more about what you do here at St. Clair. First of all, am I saying that the name of the place correctly? <laughs> This is just the way it was designed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so what you have here is an integrative psychiatric practice. Tell us, what does that mean, an integrative practice? Well, the practice of medicine over the years have changed from being an art of medicine to just the divisions of medicine. Uh, so you go see an ophthalmologist for eye problems. You go see a, a colorectal surgeon for something which is colorectal in origin, heart problems and so forth, then you get the message, you know, there are mm -hmm. different departments. However, it is not how it was supposed to be. Uh, it was supposed to be where we can take care of our bodies as a whole, because they're really interconnected. So in the field of psychiatry, we used to be able to take care of uh, addictions and family practices and health issues and, and the emotional issues together. Uh, but with, with the advent of HMOs, it began to get disintegrated. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to bring it together to make some sense out of that and reduce the cost of care while improving quality of people's life. Hmm. Now, most uh, the, the psychiatric practice for the last couple of decades has been largely uh, pharmaceuticals and different types of therapies. But you've expanded beyond that and you've added some, some additional things here. Yes. You want to talk about those? Yes, so most, most psychiatrists would love to have the ability to work with people given enough time and enough abilities to integrate their knowledge into the best recipe for that individual. Uh, however, with the 15 minutes med checks and uh, the time management which is done not by the clinicians but by the peers, we have lost that ability to do that. Mm. So we wanted to bring that back into people's life. So more time is just time with the patient is an important thing. Quality of time as well. Yeah. Quality of time. Quality of time. Um, uh, so yes, more time is needed. Uh, you cannot uh, change people's lives, which may have been pattern set in habits of doing some things uh, such as uh, drinking alcohol or or eating unhealthy and or living unhealthy. You cannot change that in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have decided to bring in the arts of effective scientific knowledge into one setting where we help people recognize how their lives may have gone away and how they can bring them together. So we develop a roadmap of recovery which is individually crafted and individually delivered and individually celebrated. Hmm. And what are some of the tools that you use for building that roadmap for people? It's very simple. It seems the modern sciences have made things a lot more complex than what they really are. Uh, the modern sciences have made the medicines and the and the and the quick runs into uh, a shop to get a treatment and run away. We we have slowed it down by using mindfulness practices. There are thousands of years of practices uh, which have uh, thousands of years old practices which have worked very well for years. And now we're beginning to recognize how living mindfully means living effectively rather than from a stressed out part of the brain works hugely to reduce the body's adrenaline and body's uh, decay and body's uh, stressed out, ever stressed out, you know, uh, state, of, state of affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, so mindfulness practices are one thing. We use medications as they are appropriate for healing. Uh, we also use in the bring bring in the science of living healthy as a whole um, by using uh, appropriate nutritional guidances and, and learning how to eat well. Well, let's talk more about that because that's that's one thing I find really exciting is how much science there is now about how the food that we eat is affects our not just our mood but our entire mental health. Well, the whole paradigm is shifting. In one of the psychiatric annals that I just got the other day, uh, the editorial started by saying uh, a possible paradigm shift. Uh, so we are seeing that many of our diseases and our disorders actually could be from uh, inflammation in our body. 
Uh, inflammation of our heart can cause heart problems. Inflammation of the lungs will cause lung problem. So inflammation that is swellings or unhappy uh, state of affairs in the brain will cause brain problems, which can also include psychiatric disorders such as bipolar disorder, then depression, then anxiety. So rather than trying to boost up serotonin, then norepinephrine, then dopamines, if we provide the body with the right ingredients, so the best medicine could be our food. Uh, this is fascinating because it's not just that food is medicine, which is powerful enough, but food might also be some of the cause of some of these psychiatric problems. Is that not the case? Hugely. The processed foods that we are eating, the unhealthy way we are eating them. When was the last, I mean, I actually met with a, uh, a, a mother brought in a daughter who, they were both in a car accident and they both had a difficulty related to their car accident and the trauma issues. But it was very interesting to watch them. And the daughter said, well, um, uh, the mother said, you know, well, she's always worried when I'm driving. And the daughter said, because you're eating and driving at the same time. <laughs> and, and listen to the mother's response. She goes, well, who doesn't have breakfast while they're driving? And, and she goes, the daughter goes, well, mom, you cannot drive and have your breakfast. But the norms are changing. Yeah. And thus, our, we're eating on the run. And we don't have a clue what we're eating. We're trying to balance the act of driving. But it's, it's also our life yeah. and the so life it, of many. It's not just what foods we're eating. It's how we're eating it. It's slowing down enough to appreciate what we're eating. Yes. And these are all the skills that you teach her. Yes. So, so people under, live under this illusion that if we eat on the run and, and if we do save our time because everybody is so stressed out about time, our discoveries are not our discoveries. They have been there for thousands of years of people's practices that if you live effectively, you have more time. And thus we teach people how to slow down to live more effectively, managing their time more wisely. Mm -hmm and thus reducing the burden of stress, and then thus having to run around and get all these medicines, which really don't serve much of anything unless it's a crisis. Uh, how are your clients responding to this when you talk to them about food and nutrition? Well, uh, we give them an array of choices. Uh, we give them the choices of first even recognizing what's happening in their lives. So we reflect back to them what we observe about them, and within that reflection, we allow them to find areas of potential growth. Uh, so fundamental to all of these things is our mindfulness practices. And within those practices, we teach how to recognize the role of food and nutrition in healing their body. And, and thus, uh, we, we teach them uh, step by step. This, this is an art that has to be taught step by step. I cannot just give you a pamphlet and ask you to just read and you can find your way in life. There's not, not some vitamins I can take to, no, to do this? much more than that. Yeah. Uh, living healthy is an art of first knowing what, how we are not, then knowing how we can, and having guides to guide you work through that. So many a times I may give people a prescription to say, well, I want you to learn how to play music and be artful of living. You know, I may give them the idea of how to slow down and sleep better so that they don't have much colds. That, because there are studies which indicate that if you don't sleep on time, you have a lot more colds and common colds and other, other conditions you know, that I cannot even begin to elaborate. So we give them specific ideas. So we have health coaches, which are our therapists, uh, a large number of practices also include addiction treatments here in this facility. Uh, so we guide them from the, from the symptoms, which may be sleepless nights, uh, racing mind, uh, anxiety and panic attacks and depression and other physical ailments and so forth. And we guide them step by step how to sleep better. We use medicines for those. Then we come down to the role of medicine, the role of food when the client is ready and allow them to learn what foods may promote them to sleep better and how not to eat and what not to eat so that they can have a good night's sleep and a restful morning. There's a sense of patience that here, like you have patience with people. You, you don't expect them to get cured overnight. And when they become impatient with their own progress, you're very gentle with them and reminding of 
how far they've come in the time that they've been working with you. It seems like, and that kind of permeates your whole presence here. I mean, you're talking about mindfulness and slowing down and not eating on the run, and that's sort of that's sort of the core values that you have here. Yes. If we are not living ourselves the way what we are teaching to other people, it just does not affect us. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of us as staff, and we practice living what we are teaching. Uh, so we, we practice mindfulness practices, we are involved in yoga, we are involved in music and arts, and, and, and what I call are the essence of effective living. And within that perspective, when we, have a, when we see a soul which is restless, I just saw a doctor this morning, um, very good in earning and delivering, but bankrupt in his own life. Uh, and, my, and then he was trying to add mindfulness and, 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 and the practice of gym, and he was getting even more stressed out. Uh, so living is, it has to be learned how to manage the, manage the times where they say the, the, the ocean of patients have no waves. Say that again, the oceans of, of patience. The ocean of patience has no waves. Ah. So we have to learn how to make our own ocean a bit more waveless. Waveless. Before we can. <laughs> and that's quite, a, quite, a, quite a, a challenge in today's society. That's what I said. I was yeah. saying that in one of our uh, morning groups, a uh, skills group, and, and the same same thing can be because we are living in the turmoil and the runs and the stressed out and nobody has the time uh, but the time will find us in emergency rooms and in places which we don't want to be in this is great i uh, i encourage people to find the time to to visit your website say claire.com and uh, they can reach you at 724-468-3999 Thank you. Thank you.